Hello, and welcome to the International Quilt Museum's Virtual First Friday Fun. I'm Lauren Holt, Education Coordinator at the museum, and today I'm going to be talking about the longtime popularity of red and white quilts in the U.S. and some of the history behind one of the most popular reds that we find in quilts. Let's get started. Red and white has been a classic color scheme in quilts since the early 1800s and continues to be popular today. The variety of design in red and white quilts is expansive. Even with the same colors and the same base pattern of a feathered star, these three quilt makers, decades apart, produced very different designs. By the end of the 1800s, red and white were also the preferred colors to be used in a fundraiser quilt. This quilt, labeled as the Omaha Commerce Quilt in our database, was made as a fundraising project for Omaha, Nebraska's First Unitarian Church in 1898 by a group known as the Ladies of Unity Circle No. 1. Local businesses and individuals paid to have their names embroidered in red embroidery floss on the white blocks, and it's likely that several different women worked on the embroidery because the stitching is different on different blocks. The turkey red triangles framing the embroidered blocks stand out brightly and give the quilt a sense of unity in visual design, even though every white block is unique. This type of fundraiser quilt was especially popular in Red Cross fundraiser quilts during World War I. For these types of quilts, people would pay a small fee to have their names added to the quilt, usually embroidered with red thread. When the quilt was finished, sometimes it would be auctioned off to raise even more money. This type of fundraising marked a change from the role of quilt making in wartime in the U.S. This particular Red Cross fundraiser quilt from 1917 features 511 inscriptions detailing more than 600 individuals, churches, and businesses involved in the fundraiser. In the Civil War, soldiers needed blankets and quilts. During World War I, the Army provided soldiers with blankets, and so quilt makers raised money for other needs, such as ambulances or knitted hats and socks. During World War I, Red Cross organizers raised over $250 million for the relief effort, equivalent to more than $4 billion today. While the bright contrast of red on white is appealing to many for its vividness and energy, there are other reasons why red became so popular. Bright red cotton fabrics produced through a particular dye process called turkey red in Western Europe and the U.S. were both color fast and fade resistant, meaning that they would stand up to repeated washing without bleeding onto other fabrics and be less likely to fade under sunlight. Using red fabric dyed in this way meant that quilters could be confident their work would last for a long time, even if it was frequently used. Turkey red is a dye process that came to Western Europe through the Mediterranean in the 1700s. The dye's color came from the Rubia tinctorum plant called matter root. At the time, most dyes on cotton would bleed and fade, and so the turkey red process and the fabric it produced became very valuable. This red cotton cloth was also expensive for people to buy because the process took at least three weeks to complete involving many complex steps and ingredients, and it had to be watched almost constantly, and so many workers had to be employed. In Europe, textile mills in France and Holland were the first to begin using the turkey red process locally. They kept the details of how it was done secret, and British textile mills did not begin producing turkey red cloth until the 1780s. American textile mills never adopted the process, so all turkey red cotton in the U.S. was imported at the time, further increasing the price. You may have noticed that many of the quilts I've presented here are composed of solid red fabric, not prints. One reason for this, especially in quilts from the late 1800s and early 1900s, is that patterns could not be printed on turkey red fabric the same way the patterns were printed on other cotton fabrics. Because of the long dye process, if a textile maker wanted to create a red print using the turkey red method, they would have to either dye, thread, and weave the pattern, or dye whole cloth and bleach away the red in specific areas. The process of bleaching a dyed cloth to add a pattern is known as discharge printing. Sometimes the discharge paste would include a new color to cover the bleached areas, and sometimes the new colors would have to be added separately, 
after the bleaching process was complete. Some of the most common added print colors were yellow, indigo, and a dark brown or black pattern outline. Whether it was solid or printed, for a long time, turkey red would have been one of the more expensive fabrics American quilt makers could purchase. That changed with the advancement of synthetic versions of the dye. In fact, when U.S. textile mills began producing a synthetic version of the turkey red process after 1869, there was a significant increase in red and white quilt patterns. Still, even fabric produced with the synthetic version of the dye was more expensive than most other colors, barring indigo, which was also color fast. Further scientific advancements led to a new synthetic version of the red alizarin dye in the early 1900s, even cheaper than the previous method. This made the cloth even more accessible, and there was a new surge in the popularity of red and white quilts. Not every new synthetic dye was color fast. This quilt, a fundraiser quilt made in 1918, may have been made with red cloth from two different sources. The three tan blocks at the top of the quilt might have once been red, but faded over time. Most of the red and white quilts in our collection today were probably made with fabrics created through one of the synthetic dye processes. The original turkey red process was so difficult and expensive that most mills switched to the synthetic version, but the appeal of a bright, vibrant red cloth that wouldn't bleed color onto other fabrics has remained popular for more than 200 years, and the versatility of two-color designs is something quilt makers continue to pursue today. Today's challenge is to make your own red and white quilt design. For this, you will need a white paper base, red paper, glue, and scissors. Sketch paper, a pencil, cardstock, and a ruler are optional for if you want to create templates like a quilt maker would. You could also draw your design in red, but piecing the paper design together will be closer to how quilt makers design their work. Step one, prepare your materials. Step two, decide whether you will plan your design in advance or work improvisationally. Traditional quilts would have been carefully planned in advance, but many modern quilt makers create quilts that are designed as they work, feeling their way through to a result that they like. If you are planning your design in advance, now's the time to sketch it out and create any templates you might need. Templates might take the shape of squares, triangles, rhombi, or hearts, stars, or any other shape you want to include. Step three, cut out your red shapes and arrange your design. Use your templates or cut any shape you like as you go. Step four, arrange your pieces. Make sure you still like your design before you glue it down. Step five, glue down your design. Glue stick is useful for this stage because it's easier to move a piece if you mess up. Somewhat similar to how pinning a design into a block can help a quilt maker see everything in place before sewing. We'd love to see your red and white designs and I hope you'll share your art with us in the comments below this video on Facebook or by tagging us at International Quilt Museum on Instagram. You can see many of these quilts in person and learn more about red and white quilts in our current exhibition, Red and White Quilts from the Joanna S. Rose Collection, on display in the West Gallery from April 1st through September 10th, 2022. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and thank you for joining us for First Friday Fun.